Okay, great. Okay, ah. So, uh, wait, let me. Okay, so today we are going to discuss the previous lesson before we just start discussing all your exam paper, ah. Because last week and I think this week, both I uh, focus on the exam discussion for part one and part two. Okay, I don't want to uh, put more this week on part three. Okay, part three, uh, teacher will discuss later. I think it's not uh, in, like every week uh, you absorb something so that you are fresh. Okay, so the previous one we are learning about uh, the seven wonders of the natural world. Okay, remember? Uh, it's not the seven wonders of the world. Uh, seven wonders of the world. Uh, it's seven wonders of the natural world. Uh, not seven, I think. It's just, uh, I think that it's not written seven. Or is that written seven? Okay, maybe that's written seven. Okay, remember the, got the, the reef. And then, I remember you all like the stars. Uh, I forgot what is that star's name. Okay? Uh, so now, since we are there, so we as well continue with this, uh, this uh, all these historical places, huh? So, this one, where on earth? Okay, let's start. Okay, uh, all right. So, there are only two of you I know. <laughs> the rest of you, I do not know where you're going to join. Okay, I hope you all will wake up soon and join. Okay, so, uh, this is not the main part of the lesson yet. So, did you really hope that by the time I reach, uh, most of you already will wake up already. Okay, uh, so this one. Can you identify these famous places? What do you think? What do you know about them? Okay, all right. Maybe Rasma, Diana, and Bevis. Maybe you can uh, type at the chat box. Uh, do you know the name of these three places? Okay. You know? <laughs> not really. <laughs> not really, yeah. Because I think we are not those that uh, we don't go travel around the world. Okay. All right. Let me tell you then what is the name. Okay, see, uh, see whether I can write. Um, oh, yeah, I can write again. Wait, uh. oh, I cannot locate. Where my pen Oh, it's this way, sorry. This one is like, eh? Why? Okay, so the first one actually uh, is here. Taj. Taj Mahal. I think you know, right? Where's Taj Mahal? You know where's Taj Mahal? Bevis? You know is it in Taj Malaysia? Mahal? No, no, no. Taj know. Mahal is one of the seven wonders of the world. Taj Mahal is one of the seven wonders of the world. Yeah, it's, not, it's not the natural world. Huh? Okay. Uh, Taj Mahal is actually wow. at India. Wow. Hello, hello. Okay. okay. Taj Mahal is actually at India. Okay. It's really one of the seven wonders of the world. And this one is called Stone, uh, Stone Age. Okay, uh, teacher, I've not been to these places as well. This is in England. Okay, this is in England. All right. Uh, this is a prehistoric, uh, monument. Uh, prehistoric monument. Okay. Uh, then the last one, the third one is uh, Machu. Uh, I think I, it looked like Pikachu to me. Machu Picchu. Okay. Okay. Machu Picchu. Uh, Machu Picchu Peru. Okay. It's at Peru. Okay. This one. Machu Picchu. The city uh, created by the Incas over 500 years ago. Uh, so these are, I mean, I know about Taj Mahal. But this one, Stonehenge and uh, Machu Picchu is also very new to teacher. Okay. So. Before we proceed, right, you look at it, say, what are some of the similarity and differences between the places? Uh, what do you think is the uh, C similarity? Uh, Rasma, Diana, anything? Can type? What's the similarity of the places? Or you want to share the differences between the places, between Taj Mahal, Stone Age, and uh, Machu Picchu? What is the what's the one thing different about these three places? How about Bevis? What's the different about these three places? Uh, I think I think the similarity is that like they have the very 
uh, how to say ah, uh, got the sejarah of them. Yeah, <laughs> and then the history. Difference, that's all. And correct history. Yeah, and then the difference I think mm. is the place, maybe all their culture. Yeah, difference yes. in culture. Correct, correct. Ah, uh, I I also thought of that as well. All right, because this one the similarity is all this is a historic place for that particular location for India Taj Mahal. It's a historic place as well as Stone Age and also Machu Picchu. But then all this, they are located at different locality. Okay. So uh, the other one, no need. Okay. We go to the next one. All right. So I have to delete all this or else it will stay there. Okay. Now this is the part that I want all uh, to, the two of you. Okay. I want you to join the class point. Okay. You say, what makes a place worth visiting for you? Ah. Uh? This one is no nothing to do with uh, any factual stuff. What it is your personal preference? What makes a place worth visiting? Look at the criteria and tick the one you agree with. Then think of a place that represents them. Ah, uh, okay. Um, maybe normally it will be some places that you have visited that you can identify with. Okay, that makes it worth visiting. Is it a? It's an area of natural beauty. Uh, then number two, it was important in the past. Uh, number three, it is home to an endangered species. Then four, it's a creative masterpiece. Five, is a major geological feature. Six, it has a rich cultural traditional, okay, a tradition. So maybe you can tick, if you like, you take one or two or whichever, then maybe you can... Uh, you know, maybe if for us, what they are not type at the chat box. Uh, number one represent what place, and then uh, if you want to take a uh, number four, uh, represent what place. Uh, maybe like that. Okay. So I'm uh so I'm going to give a class point. Ah, uh. oh, uh, maybe I straight away put the wait. I straight away put uh this card first. I straight away put slide uh short answers. Okay. So if you want the short answers that like you want number one, then what is the place that you suggest? Okay, okay, uh, I give short answers. Uh. Okay, so you can join the class point. Okay, I type the class point first. Okay, HTTPS. Okay, class point dot apps. Okay, okay, then the code will be 53472. Why okay. oh, you haven't started yet? Uh, okay, the code will be uh, 53472. Five, okay? Mm. Okay, then join there after that. Uh, yeah, because this one, uh, teacher just wanted to, then yeah, you can bring back something which you have, you have, uh, you have visited. Okay, uh, then I'll get to know more. Okay, you can pick all the three, in fact, if you wanted to. Uh, all the, not three. You can pick more than that. It's up to you to answer. Okay? All right. Hey, where's my question? Uh? My question gone. It, uh, Bevis, can you see that small little thing? Uh, no. The, no. Uh, I, yeah, okay, okay. Then after that, uh, I madam, in the class point, what we need to do, madam, in the class point? In the class point, you're supposed to, let's say, pick. Just now, the one that teacher show, you have to pick uh, number one, what place. Number two, let's say you say it's because it's a historic place. So, you can think of a historic place that's worth uh, visiting. Then, you name the place. Okay? But never mind. Wait, uh, I close the mission first. That means I cannot put it under animation. Okay, uh, wait, wait, wait. I thought it will appear. Okay, never mind. I remove the animation first. Uh. Okay, because I didn't want it to appear right at the beginning. Okay, then I think now I can let you see. Okay, now appear already. Okay? Yeah. I think two already. Oh, hey, Chantel is in. Great. Good morning, Chantel. All right, uh, Chantel just want to... Just in case you didn't hear what teacher says. So what you need to do right now is, this one is the slide. 
uh, you are supposed to write short answer. That's mean if you want to pick one, it's an area of natural beauty. I mean, the place that I can think of the natural beauty, all right, will be Holland. Okay, or they call it, uh, yeah, Holland. Okay, because it is really beautiful. With uh, if Malaysia, I would choose Cameron Highland. Okay, uh, so it depends as long as this is a place worth visiting. If just Malaysia per se also can, if you want to talk about those that you have visited in China, in Korea, in Japan, wherever is fine because we are touching not just Malaysia, but actually it is uh, everywhere. Okay, the whole world. If you know the name, you can just mention it. Okay, so but if you are you have not visited those places, maybe you saw it in the magazine, also can or through what documentaries also can. Okay, mm. so let's say number one, you pick number one, just pick one, a few like maybe number one, a natural beauty that worth visiting. Then uh, you want to say it wasn't important if all Malaysia one also no problem. <laughs> it was important in the past. I will choose Malacca. All right, uh, where you go to the A Formosa, okay. If uh, Malaysia per se, <laughs> okay, uh, so of course, if you want to pick those overseas, also no problem. Uh, it is home to an endangered species. Uh, this one, if Malaysia, I will choose Kuala Tengganu, the one where we see the turtle, okay, Rantau Abang, uh, yeah, where we see the turtle, okay. Sometimes you will. Be able to if you are fortunate enough, you will be you will be able to see more than one turtle. Uh, go to the beach to the Rantau Abang beach to lay eggs, uh, but sometimes <laughs> none appeared. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so these are some of the places that I know in Malaysia. So how about you? Okay, so I gave you about um, don't need to say long lah. I give you until uh five minutes ah. All right, Miss. Here now already three min, uh, two and a half minutes. So I give you another two and a half minutes, uh, to key in to type your answers and then submit. Okay, uh, you can wherever it has a rich cultural tradition. Uh, all right. If you talk about Malaysia, I think there is a major geological feature. Mm. Okay, creative masterpiece. Okay, all right. Oh, where are the rest? Huh? I have to say good morning, class. Where are you? Okay. 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 Let's see this one. Huh? All right. Chantel, Malaysia tropical forest because it is home to some endangered species. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Mm. If you go to any of the tropical forests, uh, you will see the this endangered species can be flora and fauna. Uh, okay, not necessarily must be like elephant or lion, all right. Hmm. Endangered species, uh, because she mentioned endangered species, all right. Okay, all right. Okay, <clears throat> all right. okay, 30 more seconds for Bevis to finalize your okay. You can write more than one now, uh. Chantal. If you have more, you can submit more. Okay. okay, because teacher, I think I did not limit the submission. Okay. Yeah, five minutes. Okay. All right, number one. Okay, let's look at it. Huh? Okay, I close submission. Okay, save for me. Okay, so. Okay, so uh, I would like to go back. Okay, so let's look at it. Uh. Mount Mulu is number one. 
Okay, it is a historic uh, natural beauty, correct? Okay, Mount Mulu. And it was important in the past, Japan Temple. Mm -hmm. Okay, that it is home to an endangered species, Tower of Pisa. Okay, hey, number four. Oh, sorry, sorry. This is number four. Okay, number four, creative masterpiece, correct? Okay, Tower of Pisa. All right, then after that, uh, number two, number two. Let's see number two, huh? Okay, number two is Wang Li Chen. Okay, number two, it was important in the past. I think it's the Great Wall of China, is it? Okay, so good. Oh, I think so, so yes. I think it's uh, the great, Wang Li Chen. Great Wall of China, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's a Great Wall of China, yes. Actually, it's very important in the past. That's exactly lah. Okay, until now, so we are still, um, still be uh, referring to uh, this Great Wall of China. Okay, and then also it's the architecture also. Unit uh, 10. Okay, sorry, yeah. Okay, wait, 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 go back first. Okay, so right now, you're going to listen. Okay, as usual, we are actually doing, uh, actually, I wanted to have more more people in. All right, so uh, you're going to listen to it first. There are four, four uh, listening, no, actually, it's reading. Uh, it's a reading text, but since they provide the listening uh, recording, so teacher also allowed you to listen while you read at the text. After that, you're supposed to answer uh, objective questions. All right? So let's listen to it once, all the four. Unit 10. Okay, listen up. Huh? Reading. A. UNESCO World Heritage. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, seeks to identify, protect and preserve the cultural and natural heritage of the world that is of value to all human beings. Heritage is what we receive from the past, live with today, and pass on to future generations. Our cultural and natural heritage are sources of life and inspiration, and cannot be replaced. Places as unique and varied as the wilds of Africa's national parks, the Acropolis of Athens, and the Great Barrier Reef in Australia make up our world's heritage. The World Heritage List includes 981 properties made up of 759 cultural, 193 natural, and 29 mixed properties. All right, I think you should know about this World Heritage. Huh? Okay, teacher would like to let like you know that on Malaysia, uh, our Mulu Cave, uh, it's under world heritage. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't belongs to Malaysia, but it belongs to the world. And Penang, okay, Penang uh, is also uh, one of the world heritage. Okay, in whole Malaysia, I think this is the two places that belongs to the world. All right, it's not like uh, you can decide what to do. Before you decide, you have to ask the world first whether you can do this, you can build this building or you can build this uh, road, you know. Uh, that's why it belongs to the world. They want to maintain it so the world can share the beauty of these places. Of course, Penang is still to the culture and uh, Mulu is still to the cave. Okay? All right. Now we have three person join. Good. Welcome. All right, Rosma Diana. Welcome, welcome. Okay, uh, so let's move on to our next one. Okay, uh, this one is the first uh, first text. We have five. Uh, we have four. Now we go to the B. B. To be included on UNESCO's World Heritage List, sites must meet at least one of the following ten criteria. One, be a masterpiece of human creative genius. Two, Show an important exchange of human values. Three. Three. Be proof of a cultural tradition or of a living or past civilization. Four. Be an outstanding example of a place from a significant stage in human history. Five. Be an outstanding example of a traditional human settlement that represents a culture. Six. Be associated with events, ideas, beliefs, artistic and literary works of outstanding universal significance. The committee considers that this criterion should preferably be used together with other criteria. 7. Contain outstanding natural phenomena or areas of exceptional natural beauty. 8. 
be outstanding examples of major stages in Earth's history. 9. Be outstanding examples of significant ecological and biological processes. 10. Contain significant natural habitats for biological diversity, including threatened species. Alright, I think you have missed out the one at the bottom. Alright, uh, so we listen to the third one. Uh, C, yeah? Uh, we go to C now. C. Site. Mausoleum of the First Kin Emperor. Year discovered. 1974. Year designated. 1987. Location. China. Category. Cultural. Criteria. One, three, four, six. Reason for designation. The army of famous terracotta warriors has stood to attention through the centuries, guarding the tomb of the emperor who united China. Thousands of statues still remain to be discovered at this archaeological site. Kin, 259 BC to 210 BC. The first unifier of China is buried here, surrounded by his terracotta warriors. The figures all have different faces. They also have clay representations of their horses, chariots and war weapons. They are artistic masterpieces and have great historical interest since the mausoleum is also associated with an event of worldwide importance the unification of the different Chinese territories into one country by the first emperor of China in 221 BC. All right, so now we go to the last one. D. Arabian Oryx Sanctuary. First site ever to be deleted from UNESCO's World Heritage List. June the 28th, 2007. The World Heritage Committee today decided to remove the Arabian Oryx Sanctuary from UNESCO's World Heritage List. The sanctuary, which was placed on the list in 1994, has become the first site to be delisted since the establishment of UNESCO World Heritage in 1972. UNESCO's reason for this was the fact that 90% of the site is being used to search for oil so that the sanctuary could not be conserved. In 1996, there were 450 Arabian oryx living on the site, but that number has fallen to 65, and its future is uncertain. Okay, so from the text here, they, there are four, right? So the first text actually um, introduced what is World Heritage, UNESCO World Heritage. The second text will be the 10th uh, criteria. After that, they show you the first one will be the terracotta is being listed as one of the uh, world heritage and the Arabian Oryx Sanctuary delisted, right? All right, being, uh, yeah, they removed it from the UNESCO World Heritage List. So this is the difference. Okay, the next one will be the uh, question where teacher will use the class point for you to answer. Okay, uh? all right, you see uh, here. All right, I give you time to look at it. Then we're going to listen to the recording again and you try to answer. This is the reading text. Okay, reading text assessment. Okay, uh, can I have uh, Bevis? Can you read the question? Just the question. Okay, just one and two. Question one and question two. Okay, yes, ma'am. What is the aim of UNESCO? And second, what are mixed properties? Okay, all right. Huh? So you, you look here. Use the information in the text to answer the question. Question one and two refer to section A. All right, so all of you already in the class point. Your teacher is going to start the class point and you can listen to it. All right. Okay, wait, uh. Unit 10, reading. A, UNESCO World Heritage. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, 
UNESCO, seeks to identify, protect and preserve the cultural and natural heritage of the world that is of value to all human beings. Heritage is what we receive from the past, live with today and pass on to future generations. Our cultural and natural heritage are sources of life and inspiration and cannot be replaced. Places as unique and varied as the wilds of Africa's national parks, the Acropolis of Athens and the Great Barrier Reef in Australia make up our world's heritage. The World Heritage List includes 981 properties made up of 759 cultural, 193 natural and 29 mixed properties. Okay. All right, I'd like to listen to it again before you... Uh, Unit 10. Reading. A. UNESCO World Heritage. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, seeks to identify, protect and preserve the cultural and natural heritage of the world that is of value to all human beings. Heritage is what we receive from the past, live with today and pass on to future generations. Our cultural and natural heritage are sources of life and inspiration and cannot be replaced. Places as unique and varied as the wilds of Africa's national parks, the Acropolis of Athens and the Great Barrier Reef in Australia make up our world's heritage. The World Heritage List includes 981 properties made up of 759 cultural, 193 natural and 29 mixed properties. All right, so yeah, you can answer. So you've listened to it twice, or not three times, okay? Yeah. All right, there are four with us now. Oh, oh Rosma Diana, okay, okay. All right. Okay, all right, two have answered. Let's have a look. All right, mm, B, okay, B and C. All right, Bevis gave the answer B and C, Rosma Diana. Okay, good. All right, so teacher, download first. Huh? Hey, Chantel, the second one, second one, you do not know what's the answer. Okay, close submission. Okay, uh -huh. all right, let's look at teacher's answer. Uh, this is Chantel. Chantel didn't manage to answer number two. All right, so this is Rosma Diana's answer, uh, answer, B and C. All right, let's look at teacher's answer. So what is the EM of UNESCO? Okay, the answer is B to ensure the continued existence of special places because they want to pass it down so that future generation able to also enjoy what you are enjoying. Then what are mixed properties? Uh, actually, it's D, culturally important sites in spe special natural setting. All right, special natural setting. Okay, let's go to... Your answer, huh? so it's B and D. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. So we have, actually it's quite tricky, I would say, because reading uh, for both the assessment that we have that day, I think reading is the one, one part that most of you did not really score well. Okay, so yeah, so this is B, huh? Chantel. K is supposed to be B and this is supposed to be D. Right. And then this one. Uh, see, I told you a bit tricky, right? So uh, both Bevis and uh, Rosma Diana scored one point for this A. Okay, now we go to the next one. Okay, now this one, eh, I didn't put it. Okay, I'm afraid after that I click the answer will appear. <laughs> Wait, ah, uh, why is I shucks? Okay, now slide drawing again, ah. Uh. 
Okay, question three refers to section B. Which of the criteria is usually not used on its own? Okay, which of the criteria? So you have to listen to the criteria. Okay. B. To be included on UNESCO's World Heritage List, sites must meet at least one of the following ten criteria. One. Be a masterpiece of human creative genius. Two, show an important exchange of human values. Three, be proof of a cultural tradition or of a living or past civilization. Four, be an outstanding example of a place from a significant stage in human history. Five, be an outstanding example of a traditional human settlement that represents a culture. Six, be associated with events, ideas, beliefs, artistic and literary works of outstanding universal significance. The committee considers that this criterion should preferably be used together with other criteria. Seven, contain outstanding natural phenomena or areas of exceptional natural beauty. Eight, be outstanding examples of major stages in Earth's history. Nine. Be outstanding examples of significant ecological and biological processes. Ten, contain significant natural habitats for biological diversity, including threatened species. Okay, listen to it again, huh? All right. So, which of the criteria is usually not used on its own? Okay. B. To be included on UNESCO's World Heritage List. Sites must meet at least one of the following ten criteria: one, be a masterpiece of human creative genius; two, show an important exchange of human values; three, be proof of a cultural tradition or of a living or past civilization; four, be an outstanding example of a place from a significant stage in human history; five. Be an outstanding example of a traditional human settlement that represents a culture. Six, be associated with events, ideas, beliefs, artistic and literary works of outstanding universal significance. The committee considers that this criterion should preferably be used together with other criteria. Seven, contain outstanding natural phenomena or areas of exceptional natural beauty. Eight. Be outstanding examples of major stages in Earth's history. Nine. Be outstanding examples of significant ecological and biological processes. Ten. Contain significant natural habitats for biological diversity, including threatened species. Okay. All right. Maybe you do not know the Roman number. This one is four. Uh, this one is uh, five six. This is five, then plus one is six, then uh, five, six, seven, eight, then this is three. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, which one is usually not used on its own? Okay. I know that Simi is here. Simi, maybe you can join. Okay. The class point. All right. The code five, three, four, seven, two. Okay. All right. Let's look. All right, Bevis answered uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, Chantal answered uh, C. Okay. All right. Uh, Simi, you are able to answer or you want to rest first? <laughs> you just enter. You do not know the text yet. It's about uh, world heritage. Okay, it's about world heritage. Huh? All right. Uh, in order to be considered as the world heritage, is the B part where they have 10 criteria. If they are able to fit in one or more, then it will be considered as the world heritage. Okay, but here the question three refers to which of the criteria is usually not used on its own. That means you need to be supported by other criteria. All right, not one, not, not sufficient. All right, to be, uh, to be declared as the uh, world heritage. Okay, let's look at the answer. Da, da, da. Okay, did I close it? Close the submission? All right. 
All right. Okay, Rasmatiana is here. Simi is here. All right, good. So I close the mission. All right. Okay, so I'll go back to the text. La. I'll go back to the text. La. Instead of me just telling you the answer first. All right, go back to the text. Wait, wait, wait. It will, it will, will auto-read. Wait, uh, we will auto -read. B. Uh, this one. Okay, let's listen to this. Uh, to be included on UNESCO's World Heritage List, sites must meet at least one of the following ten criteria. One, be a masterpiece of human creative genius. Two, show an important exchange of human values. Three, be proof of a cultural tradition or of a living or past civilization. Four, be an outstanding example of a place from a significant stage in human history. Five, be an outstanding example of a traditional human settlement that represents a culture. Six, be associated with events, ideas, beliefs, artistic and literary works of outstanding works of outstanding universal significance. The committee considers that this criterion should preferably be used together with other criteria. All right, so this is the answer. Seven, contain outstanding natural phenomena or areas of exceptional okay. natural beauty. Eight, be outstanding examples of major stages in Earth's history. Nine, be outstanding examples of significant ecological and biological processes. Ten, contain significant natural habitats for biological diversity, including threatened species. Okay, so the answer is this one. Huh? The committee considered that this criterion, when a lot is criteria, when it's only one is criterion. All right, I just want to show you the spelling. All right, it's just like bacteria. We always spell bacteria, bacteria, bacteria. Bacteria is a lot, all right? But bacterion is actually one, but we seldom able to see this tiny uh, species. <laughs> so small by itself, normally it's bacteria, all right? Uh, okay, but one is bacterion, okay? So criteria, criterion is same with bacteria, bacterion. Okay, so this is the one. The one is number eight that your uh, pick for C uh, is the outstanding example of major stages in Earth history. So that is not uh, really required to combine with another criteria. Okay, all right. Uh, so the answer is uh, C actually. Okay, so I will quickly move back to the question. All right, so you see, yeah. Uh, Okay. Okay. Yes, I see. Okay, now I have to be careful when I move. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this one will be the next one. Okay. Uh, this part. What is true about the figure in the mausoleum? Okay. This is the terracotta. If you have been to China, if you have visited this terracotta, I think you can understand better. Okay. Ah, uh, so. Then number five, which event? Yeah, which event are the figures associated with? With event, okay. I listen to it and uh, identify the answer. Yeah, okay. I'll start this one first. Okay, then I will start the recording. Wait. C. Okay. Site, Mausoleum of the First Kin Emperor. Year discovered, 1974. Year designated, 1987. Location, China. Category, Cultural. Criteria, 1, 3, 4, 6. Reason for designation. The army of famous terracotta warriors has stood to attention through the centuries, guarding the tomb of the emperor who united China. Thousands of statues still remain to be discovered at this archaeological site. Kin, 259 BC to 210 BC. The first unifier of China is buried here, 
surrounded by his terracotta warriors. The figures all have different faces. They also have clay representations of their horses, chariots, and war weapons. They are artistic masterpieces and have great historical interest since the mausoleum is also associated with an event of worldwide importance, the unification of the different Chinese territories into one country by the first emperor of China in 221 BC. All right. Okay. I'll let you listen to another sign. C. Site. Mausoleum of the First Qin Emperor. Year discovered. 1974. Year designated. 1987. Location. China. Category. Cultural. Criteria. One. Three. Four, six. Reason for designation. The army of famous terracotta warriors has stood to attention through the centuries, guarding the tomb of the emperor who united China. Thousands of statues still remain to be discovered at this archaeological site. Kin, 259 BC to 210 BC. The first unifier of China is buried here, surrounded by his terracotta warriors. The figures all have different faces. They also have clay representations of their horses, chariots, and war weapons. They are artistic masterpieces and have great historical interest since the mausoleum is also associated with an event of worldwide importance. The unification of the different Chinese territories into one country by the first emperor of China in 221 BC. Right? Yeah. Okay, you can uh, try. All right. This is a uh, SPM question, sir. Huh? Okay. Hmm. Uh, because I realized the, after the exam, after the assessment, because you have done uh, the speaking and listening assessment with my student, uh, yeah, this week completed. So I realized that reading actually is the one that you all have the most problem. You all could not identify the correct answer because everything is very like, ah, uh, it looks, it's like you do not know which answer to choose. Okay? Yeah. All right, let's see. Only one? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Okay, only Bevis have answered. How about the rest of you? Okay, please try, huh? Right, please try. Okay, what is true about the figures in the mausoleum? Thousands of them have been found. They are not identical to each other. They are actual weapons. were buried with them. Archaeologists discovered them in 1987. Uh, okay, then after that, which event are the figures associated with the beginning of the China Empire, the war that divided China, the birth of a new China emperor, the discovery of new territory in China? Okay. So uh, don't worry, during the exam, you actually have the text with you, okay? But because i combining now with uh, listening as well as reading, since we have the text, why not we listen to the text? Okay, i give you another one more minute. All right, I hope you are able to submit. Okay. All right. Okay, I already have two. Hey, yes. All right, see me submitted. Uh, Rasma Diana, are you able to? Until three, yeah, 30 more seconds. Okay, because I know that uh, sometimes it's the line problem. Okay, maybe Rasma Diana submitted, but the thing is now turning and turning, waiting to be submitted. <laughs> all right, great. Okay, I have all the four. All right, close submission. Okay, let's have a look. All right, yes, 
Okay, I will check Rasmadiana first. Yes, they are not identical because thousands of them are uh, still being buried. Uh, not, 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 uh, it's there, but they have not really, uh, how do you say, dig it, dig it yet. <laughs> okay, uh, they are not identical. Their weapons were buried with them. Archaeology discovered them is not 1987, but uh, 1974. Okay, yeah, the beginning of China Empire. Very good. So good. All right, the answer is B and A. Okay. The answer is B and A. B and A. The answer is B and A. All right, good. So Bevis and uh, both uh, Rosma Diana scored correctly. Okay, now let's go to the last one, D. Okay, yeah. Uh? Uh, this one is my answer. Okay, B and A. Okay, let's go to the last one. Okay, let me press. Oh, no, I gotta press first. So, which year had the lowest number of oryx living in the sanctuary? Okay, uh, which year? All right, when you are attempting uh, this reading or listening, make sure you underlined uh, you, at your test paper, right? Underline the keywords. Okay, so that you are, you are focused, lowest number. Then after that, the sanctuary was delisted. Okay, this one, delisted. Because of what? Okay, all right, huh? So listen to it and try to answer. Okay, let's listen. D. Arabian Oryx Sanctuary, first site ever to be deleted from UNESCO's World Heritage List, June the 28th, 2007. The World Heritage Committee today decided to remove the Arabian Oryx Sanctuary from UNESCO's World Heritage List. The sanctuary, which was placed on the list in 1994, has become the first site to be delisted since the establishment of UNESCO World Heritage in 1972. UNESCO's reason for this was the fact that 90% of the site is being used to search for oil, so that the sanctuary could not be conserved. In 1996, there were 450 Arabian oryx living on the site, but that number has fallen to 65 and its future is uncertain. Okay, listen to it again. <clears throat> D. Arabian Oryx Sanctuary. First site ever to be deleted from UNESCO's World Heritage List. June the 28th, 2007. The World Heritage Committee today decided to remove the Arabian Oryx Sanctuary from UNESCO's World Heritage List. The sanctuary, which was placed on the list in 1994, has become the first site to be delisted since the establishment of UNESCO World Heritage in 1972. UNESCO's reason for this was the fact that 90% of the site is being used to search for oil, so that the sanctuary could not be conserved. In 1996, there were 450 Arabian oryx living on the site, but that number has fallen to 65, and its future is uncertain. Okay, all right. Okay, all right, I think this is quite easy, right? Okay, I hope I give you about two minutes. All right, <laughs> if all the four of you already submitted, then I will close the submission. Okay, right now only got one. Okay, mm. the sanctuary was delisted because is it A, oil had been found on the site, or B, it couldn't protect an endangered species, C, only 90% of it could be conserved, or D, the oryx had moved to other areas. Uh, Okay. All right. Okay, we have listened to it twice. I did three times. Okay, one minute. <laughs> All right. Sanctuary is a place where animals lived. Okay. 
<laughs> we are going to move into the vocabulary after this. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think some of you are still not sure. Do you need to listen to it again? Come on. Okay, I'll wait until two min uh, another 30 seconds. Huh? Okay, another 30 seconds. Okay, normally the listening also they allowed you to listen to it twice. All right. Okay. Three submitted. All right. Bevis, Rosma, Diana, Simi, Chantel. <laughs> Five more seconds. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I close submission. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Let's review. Okay, D. All right. Cindy gave the answer. Okay, actually, the answer is D, correct? Because this is the year where they actually uh, delisted the this Ornix Sanctuary. This one, no, it's not A. Okay, wait. Mm -hmm. 1996 is the one that they discover there's a load of Ornix, 400 over, I think. Is it 400 over? Uh, yeah, 450. Okay, it's not A also. Uh, Bevis, it's, the answer is D yeah, for this part. Okay, the answer is D. Where is my cursor? This answer is D. Uh, where they, this one is not 90% could not, 90% uh, of it could not be uh no could not it's uh 90 percent of the site is being used to search for oil okay uh okay you can say it could not be conserved but that is not their main main focus what happened was because the onyx already left 65 so they are not sure the future the future is uncertain okay so the answer is d and they listed because it couldn't protect an endangered species that their yeah, main focus because the criteria the reason why that place is being uh listed at world heritage unesco world heritage is because of that animal ornix but since the animals the number of animal dwindles from 450 to 65 so they decided to they listed it okay now go to the next one Okay, right. This one, okay. I, I, am not sure how. I'm not sure how much you know about the continents, right? So this is our world. Okay, I would like you all to. Uh, this is like drawing. Ah, uh, you can uh slide. You can draw. You can do whatever. You can put there. Write on it also. No problem. So we have Africa here. We have Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Australia, Europe. North America and South America. Okay, let's see how well you know uh, the continent, okay? All right, uh, so teacher will start the slide drawing. Okay, let's see how well you know the continent. Okay. All right, there are seven continents. All right, uh, which one is Africa? Always do the one that you know first, okay? <laughs> do the one that you know first. Okay, uh, this one, I think I'll allocate two minutes, okay? Because you just need to maybe draw lines. Or maybe you, as usual, you number it. Maybe Africa, you number which one? Antarctica, you number which one? Okay, if you don't want to draw lines. Okay? Uh, I think Australia is easy. <laughs> you wrote. North America, South America. Okay, hmm. yeah, I give two minutes. Huh? All right. <clears throat> Basically, we are learning about the world. So it's good that you have an idea of this seven continent. This is in the syllabus. So if you know, when you have any reading text regarding the continents, if they, uh, the continent is about Australia, so you have an idea. If about Asia, you know. And it's, if it's referring to Europe, you know. Okay, where actually is 
uh, Europe. Okay, maybe you do not know specifically every country, all right, every country in the Europe, but at least you know where is Europe located. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. <laughs> Okay, no one submitted yet. It's almost two minutes already. Come on. Come on, come on. If you do not know, just, just give a wild guess. All right? Uh, okay? You just learn. It's okay. This is geography. Okay, hey. Only one submitted. Come on, quick. Cannot be only one. Quickly, quickly. I don't want to reveal first. Come on. There are only four of you. <laughs> Just quickly uh, put in the number, which one is Africa. I think you know. Okay. Then you have Antarctica, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, South America. All right. There are seven continents. Okay. Oh, Rosman, oh, Rosman Yara put down there. Okay, can Rosman Yara. Hey, Simi and uh, Chantel, where are you? Okay, uh, we are the three. Lah. Three and then I have to stop. Okay. Uh, okay, is it the line problem or what? Okay, there are two already. Okay, Simi and Paris. <laughs> Rosman Yara already sent to me uh, via the chat. Okay, uh, Chantel, are you there? Is your line not... Uh, <gasps> Not strong. Okay, then my uncle's submission ah, safe for review. Okay, let's look at CV. Okay, Africa. Okay, let's see ah, seven, seven. This one is Africa. <laughs> okay, six Antarctica. All right, Asia three. Okay, uh, Australia. Ah, uh, this is not Af Australia. Uh, Europe, Europe. Okay, North America, South America. Okay, North America, South Africa. Correct. Okay, uh, this is North America. This is South America. Okay, we will discuss further. Okay, let's see about this. Okay, Africa. Ay, this is not Africa. Ay, this is not. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, North America is not here. This is not Australia. Wow, I realized that <laughs> your map <laughs> is not very good. Okay. Uh, hmm. <laughs> okay all right let's learn lah. i didn't know that you all do not know all the seven continent <laughs> you don't even know where it's australia okay i i didn't give the answer I oh okay okay i think i didn't give okay okay then i'll do it here lah. okay all right africa africa is this one number four ah. okay this is africa i'll just uh yeah should i write Okay, this is Africa. Where is it? Africa is this one. Okay, this is Africa. Okay, where you have your... This one is the Mediterranean. Where you get all your oranges and all. This is the Mediterranean Sea. Why is it so special? Because it's like... Uh, it is... Uh, the the water there is... Uh, is captured or something like that. I think they built something here. I forgot what is the special bridge there's a special name for this bridge to link it together. Okay? Yeah. Then after that, this is Australia. Okay? Where you have all your kangaroos. Okay? And a koala bear. Okay? This is Australia. And this is Europe. All right? And no, this is Asia. Sorry. Europe is on top. This is Asia where Malaysia is here. Then have all the, uh, all the, boom, uh, all this, uh, what do you call that? Uh, then here, Japan, Korea, okay? Uh, okay, this is Asia, Indonesia, here, this part. This is Asia, huh? okay? And this one is Europe, okay? Europe, okay? European, here, Europe right on top. Okay, then this is North America, okay? And this is South America, North America, South America, okay? Where this... Uh, uh, Columbus uh, traveled uh, around the world and discovered uh, North America. Okay, discovered there is another continent. Okay, when he go traveling. This is Antarctica, uh, where you have all your polar bear. 
where only scientists will go there because it's all ice, freezing cold, where you have your igloo, your Eskimo. Okay? All right, ah? Huh? Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm teaching geography now. Okay, never mind. I uh, won't be tested. Okay, right now, this is the last, uh, last, this is the last uh, activity that teacher have prepared for you today. Okay, let's look at it. Huh? As we are learning about all this continent and about different places, uh, world heritage, so you need to know the correct, uh, correct vocabulary. So look at the first one. Okay, uh, let's have reading. Huh? Uh, can I have Bevis to read one, two, three, four? And see me to read five, six, seven, eight. Okay? Can Bevis? Okay. The mother tongue of Canada is Ottawa, but most people think it's Toronto. Pam has non-verbal communication because her mom is Italian and her dad is Swedish. Someone's official languages and attitudes change and develop as they get older. Pakistani, Indian, and Chinese are three of the many personal beliefs living in the UK. Okay, Simi? Hey, where's Simi? Um, of okay. course, Jack Snow French. He was born in Paris and is a capital city. Belgium has three ethnic groups. Dutch, French, and German are all spoken there. I speak some Greek, but I was born in the USA, so my native speaker is English. Things like smiling or closing one eye are examples of dual nationality. Okay, if you know you whatever that Simi and Bevis have just read, uh, the vocabulary, the highlight, the bold actually is at the wrong place. So you see, the words in bold are in the wrong places. So write them in the correct place. So I need you to write them in the correct place. So mother tongue, where is this mother tongue supposed to be? In which sentence? Maybe you can just write on top. Okay, uh, maybe mother tongue is supposed to be number seven. So you write seven on top of mother tongue. Or you say uh, Pam has non-verbal communication. If you think this non-verbal communication should be in sentence four, so you can write four. Okay, all right, uh, we are going to do short. Uh, short answer. Oh, I, I, I put short answer there. Okay, so you can type. Okay, you can type uh, maybe number one, supposed to be ethnic group. So you put ethnic group. Okay, you can type. Okay, because this is our last exercise anyway. Okay, so you can type and then get to know how to spell as well. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm using short answer. Okay, this one, I will like you to maybe have 10 minutes because we still, uh, yeah, I'm not in a hurry. Okay, so you look at it properly and then type your answers. Okay, mm. so which one? Okay, uh, you are learning today mother tongue, nonverbal communication, official languages, okay, personal beliefs, personal beliefs, okay, capital city. Then you have uh, ethnic groups, native speaker, and dual nationality. Uh, okay? All right. If you have any question, you can type at the chat box. You want teacher to explain. Uh, if Bevis and uh, Simi, you have any question, you can just ask teacher. Teacher can explain. Okay? Right, this is uh, in your syllabus, huh? okay, in your CFR syllabus, so you need to know, okay. Music for you to listen. But to know what music is that? Okay, while doing, we listen to the music. <laughs>
Okay, Rasmah Diana, if you're not able to join, right, you just type at the chat box, yeah? Okay, teacher will look at the chat box. Okay, your answer. Okay. One already answered. Okay, maybe I think I give you about four minutes. Okay, four or five minutes. Huh? Okay, uh, Rosma Diana, if you cannot uh, join the class point, kindly type at the chat box, yeah? And then you just send. Okay, type, 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 and then you send. Okay, I do not know whether Chantel, okay. 20 more seconds. Okay, Chantel, can you send? Alright, if Chantel cannot send, also can uh, screenshot and then send to teacher later. Okay, I'll discuss lah huh, while waiting for uh, Chantel to send in. Okay, let's look at the first one. I download first. Okay, alright. Okay, uh, while waiting for the rest. Okay, the first one. The mother tongue of... Oh, wait. I, I switch off the music first. Huh? It's a bit uh, noisy. Okay, let's look at the first one. Uh, the mother tongue of Canada is Ottawa, but... Okay, Chantal is in. All right, I think I can close mission. All right, let's go back. Huh? All right. Okay, we will look at all the answers together. So, the mother tongue of Canada is Ottawa, but most people think it's Toronto. So, your gift, capital city, capital city, excellent. All the three correct. Capital city. So, Canada is not Ottawa, but Toronto. Okay, now you know about it, right? Okay, so Toronto is the capital city. Next, uh, Pam. Pam has non-verbal communication because her mom is Italian and her dad is Swedish. So, Ah, dual nationality. Very good. Okay, all of you, correct. It's dual nationality. This means Italian, just like us Chinese, right? So, if you are, uh, your mom uh, is Chinese, then married and Iban. So, you are Chinese Iban. So, you have dual, dual nationality. Okay, but normally, Malaysia, we will just follow the dad. Okay? Uh, we cannot put two. We follow the dad. Okay, this is a normal culture. Huh? So someone's official languages and attitude change and develop as they get older. So uh, what do you put? Personal beliefs, okay. Personal belief, okay, very good. All the three answered personal beliefs. Yes, personal beliefs, correct. Then Pakistani, India and Chinese are three of the ethnic group. Ethnic group, very good. Yes, ethnic groups. Uh, Malaysia, the ethnic groups. If you say Malaysia as a whole, not Sarawak, Malaysia as a whole is Chinese, uh, Malays, and Indians. All right? That is the uh, ethnic groups. So, but of course, if you come to Sarawak, there are more than that. Okay? So, of course, this one, no French. He was born in Paris as, and is a, a native speaker. Yes, number five, native speaker. Very good. All of you got it right. All the three of you. Excellent. Okay, then after that, yeah, let's go to the six. Belgium has three. Dutch, French, and German are all spoken there. So, what did you put? Uh, number six are official languages. Okay? Official languages. Very good. All of you are able to do it. Official languages. Number eight is things like smiling and closing eyes are example of nonverbal communication. Okay, good. 
Okay? All of you got it right. Okay? Every one of you. Good, good, good. I'm so happy. Okay, also today you learned something new. Okay, you learn about uh, all the different words. So make sure you use it correctly. Okay, when you speak mother tongue, uh, non-verbal communication, uh, then you have personal beliefs. Uh, belief spelled with B-E-L-I-E-F. Okay, this belief is the noun. Uh, if it's in B-M, this one, uh, if it's in B-M, it means, uh, this is the last part. Uh. So I just want to show you a little bit more. Okay, this one, if this one is spelled like this, where is it now? That's my, okay. Okay, if this one, believe spelled with this one is kepercayaan. Okay, it's a noun. All right. Uh, but if it's spell is this one, B, okay, I go down a little bit. B-E-L-I-E-V-E -E -E is percaya. It's a verb. Okay, I believe you. Okay, I believe what you say. All right, but it's not kepercayaan, ah. Uh, I believe what you say. So, uh, that is the different. Okay, then after that, uh, native speaker, you know. Okay, we are native speaker. Okay, we are not speaking English. Uh, we are not the native speaker. All right, so, mm, any any dual land nationality? Any question you want to ask? Bavi Simi, Rasma Diana, and uh, Chantel? Any question? If it's no question, uh, that's the end of our lesson today. Okay, uh, teacher will keep. All right. So, thank you very much for your participation today. All right. So, teacher will see you next week. Okay. So, yeah, I hope the rest of them that didn't manage to join our class today will be able to... Uh, Babies, can you remove teacher from the... from uh, Put back... Uh, not, not sharing screen anymore. Remove the screen. Ah, uh, yes. Already. Oh, my God. Okay, good. <laughs> it's okay. All right, ah. Huh? So that's all for today. Thank you for joining. All right, ah. Uh, you have class after this, and teacher have to go to school right now because I have class with my five. All right, bye bye. All right. Thank bye. you, Hannah. Thank you, Madam. Okay, hope you enjoy yourself. Bye bye.